Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and I'm going to be showing you how, very tedious, I squish my tomatoes for the sauce. So uh, bear with me. I decided to get this part out of the way because it's going to take very long, but I may cut the video off, um, you know, whenever I think I've shown you enough. This is very hard to get used to. I bought it yesterday, but... Um, I don't know guys, I, I think I'm so glad that I found it because I really need this to uh, make tomatoes, bottle tomatoes, make tomato sauce. I cook with tomatoes every week, so I love it. No matter how many problems it gives me, I still love it. I'm doing the cherry tomatoes. This is very hard to do um, manually, very hard to do it. I actually have, I didn't show you the tomatoes, I have this many tomatoes and those are plum tomatoes right there, okay, so I have quite a bit, might as well get started right away, you know what I mean? It's actually not bad once you get the hang of it. It's more or less like a grinding rather than a turning. Um, honestly, it gets easier as you go along. It's just a matter of getting used to this gadget. I'm putting approximately one cherry tomato in at a time. See how I'm pressing and not really actually turning? That's the trick to this machine. And then I remove the pulp, and I can always pass it through again later on. Um, I just want to get through the main bulk of tomatoes because I have a lot to do. And I want to make sure that I do them as finely as I possibly can. I don't like my tomatoes chunky or pulpy, really. I like them very fine, so...
So guys, um, <sighs> I'm looking away here. I forgot you were there. Um, I really, you know, I really do think that part of this recipe originated in Greece. Um, I believe that it could have been an Etruscan Greek colony that first settled in in that part of Italy because um, it was taken over, guys, uh, virtually by Greece. And um, that part of Italy, the south, where my dad came from, Reggio Calabria, um, is right at the tip of the toe. And it's very close to Messina. And just a hop, skip, and a jump, probably not literally, from Africa. And so um, that area of Italy remained, just like Greece, a very, very flourishing agricultural, no, not agricultural, what am I saying? Artistic and cultural center. It's full of museums and um, archaeological sites and everything is so well preserved. And there are these famous bronze statues that were found in the ocean, uh, which would be what, the Black Sea? I, I have to look that up and get back to you about that. Um, this, you know, this is important also for my heritage story because, um, well, I know that my great-grandmother, um, her name, her maiden name, actually, no, her, ma um, yeah, her maiden name actually is Pure Italian. Pure Italian, although she was born in Jamestown. Uh, that family name originated in, T um, where was it, Florence, Tuscany, around that area. And I'll get back to you with those details should I go any further into my heritage story because, guys, I'm not finding much. Um, I do have my parents' birth certificates and all the names and dates, but I, you know, I'm not finding anything historical is what I'm talking about. I'm not finding the details. I know essentially who the people were, but I don't know the details. I don't know the reasons for their... They fled back and forth from USA to um, Italy, and I don't know why. So... Um, but that line, that line that settled in um, Reggio Calabria, it, particularly around the village that I, my, my relatives had always grown up in, um, it's, it's really populated by um, ethnic groups that get traced back to the Greek colonies. And it's so interesting because my dad's, my dad's, um, how do I say this? Um, back then, I would say maybe about 5,000 BC, something like that. I'm going very general, guys. Uh, four or 5,000 BC, um, they, were, they were besieged. They were besieged by a warring king, and then Rajo went to the aid of the Greeks, and the Greeks protected them. But um, the people from Reggio were victimized. And so, you know, they were victims of war. They were, they were pawns. Um, they fought on the, on the side of the Greeks for a long time, but they were victimized by other warring tribes. So, you know, they didn't have it very easy at all. And uh, Reggio is famous for its agricultural and fertile soil, olives, um, wheat, and I have to look all that stuff up. I know, as a fact, my father went to pick olives in the fields because the adults were put at risk because of um, the soldiers during World War II. So, guys, you know, it's kind of um, hardship all around. That part of the world is very sought after for its beauty, but it always had to fight to survive, you know. And um, 
So that's why I think the dishes that come from that part of the region are so, to me, they're almost like a celebration of everything that those people had to endure and still do. Um, it, of course, it's different now. And the, where my dad came from, there are only about 300 and some odd people living there. Would you believe that? Of course, that's um, the um, village of uh, Skin de Elephant. I, I have to uh, talk more about this when I give you more details on my heritage roots. But my dad's side is definitely the more interesting of the two parents' um, heritage that I have. I, my father's side is much more interesting and much more filled with various different details. Um, it's incredible what they went through and what that part of the world had to struggle through just to maintain their own sense of peace and identity. They were always being attacked. Um, like many beautiful parts of Italy and Europe, they were always being attacked by warring tribes who were migrating, looking for um, more fertile land. And it, it, I guess it was a struggle then, guys. I, I can't imagine having to live like that, but I know that many of us still do that out of necessity out of the desire to, you know, remain apart from the rest of society and keep safe to survive. That's how we survive. And I, I can't imagine ever striking out completely on my own and doing anything like that. I mean, it's appealing. The idea is appealing, but I don't think I could ever really be happy like that. I would always be, you know, looking over my shoulder. So, um... Let's see how this is doing so far. Whoa. <laughs> oh, well, I guess that goes um, about 20 grams of my tomatoes. <laughs> so um, there you have it, guys. A little bit of history in a nutshell and a very messy counter. I shouldn't have done that. I think I'm having a morning where I'm going to need a second cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm feeling so mellow right now. Um, I'm not tired, but I really could use a perk up. So after this video, I'm going to make another cup of coffee and get started on my peppers. But I still have a long way to go with the tomatoes. My God, this takes a long time. And so right now I've been going at this for almost 15 minutes and I'm only about halfway through. I'm not going to lift the bowl anymore. <laughs> I'm putting all the pulp in there and then maybe I'll just go over it one more time. I mean, I could put this in with the vegetables, but I'd rather not.
Okay, guys, these are the last tomatoes, the cherry tomatoes, and then I have the other batch of plum tomatoes. So I would say it takes a good 20 minutes, 30 minutes to do the tomatoes. So you add that on top of the 75 minutes of cooking time. It takes a long time to make this recipe, <laughs> but well worth it because this is how I cook. I like doing things from scratch. And I suppose I could put the tomatoes in the blender, but then all that pulp would just get completely mixed in. And I would have to do the whole thing all over again with this. Um, just to strain out the seeds and everything. You know what I mean? So this is the best way. Okay, guys. That's it. And um, I'm going to end, I'm going to end the vlog right here. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed some of this, listening to the history. And I'm sorry the demonstration was a little on the quiet side, but I am really concentrating on my muscle there. Um, so uh, the next part will be to uh, simmer down the peppers, which I'll be doing with salt, pepper, oregano, and um, what do you call it? Um, pepper and salt and oil, olive oil. And um, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be adding some basil to the tomato just because I love, I love the taste of tomato with basil. To me, tomato doesn't taste like tomato unless it's got basil in it. I don't know why. So um, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.